Hello and welcome to my next video on carbohydrates. This is the final biological molecule we've got to do. We've done proteins and lipids. So let's go. Carbohydrates make up 10% of the organic matter of a cell. They are energy source. They're the main energy source. They also use energy storage and they use the structural components. Carbohydrates are molecules that contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen only. They're literally a hydrated carbon. And all of them have a general formula. This is the formula all carbohydrates form of C, N, H, 2, N, O, N. So if you have any number, so you have, a, let's say, a five ring carbohydrate, so five carbons, C5, H10, O5. That applies to all of them. This basically means for every carbon there are there's one water molecule, because water molecule is H2O. Okay. This is a monomer of carbohydrate, in this case alpha glucose. Now, the important thing of all monomers is that they are soluble, sweet test tasting, and form crystals. Now, if it is soluble, it means it will affect the water potential of a cell. So, and we don't want that. That means the more glucose you have in your cells, the lower the water potential, so that means water's going to flood into your cells and it'll burst by lysis and then you're dead, so you don't want that. But we'll come on to that in a minute. This is a, just a simple monosaccharide. There are three types of monosaccharides. Three ring triose sugars, five ring pento sugars and six ring hexose sugars. As you see, this is a hexo sugar because it has six carbons in its ring. So triodes, three carbons, pentodes, five carbons, and hexodes, six carbons. Now, six carbons aren't all in the ring. You can see carbon six branches off, but the ring has an oxygen in it. Now, the most common uh, monosaccharides are hexose sugars. This includes glucose, fructose, um, but there are other Pentose ones, if you look to the RNA and DNA video, you've got deoxyribose and ribose, those are both pentose sugars. And most pentose and hexoses occurs rings. Now, glucose can occur as either the ring structure or a linear chain, but the chain normally just curls itself into a ring, it's much easier like that. Now, there are two forms of glucose, alpha glucose and beta glucose. How can you tell the difference? Very simply, if you look at carbon 1, in alpha glucose, H is above the ring, OH is below the ring. And in beta glucose, the other way around, OH is above the plane of the ring, H is below the plane of the ring. And the way I like to remember it is alpha glucose, OH is below B. So in alpha A, OH is B below. In beta glucose, OH is above A. So in B it's A, in A it's B. I like to remember it like that, and it always works for me. Now, like all the biological molecules, these can go undergo condensation reactions. That is, water is released and a new bond is formed. In this case, we've done two alpha glucose molecules forms a maltose molecule and water. And the bond, we've had peptide bonds, ester bonds, and this one is a glycosidic bond. Now, there are two different types of glycosidic bonds. The one shown here is a 1,4 glycosidic bond. That is because it forms carbon with carbon 1 on the left and carbon 4 on the right. But it's also 1,6. That is, it would be 1 on the left, so 6 on the right. 6 is the one that branches upwards. And you get two types of, of polysaccharides, because that was a disaccharide, maltose, and you get polysaccharides, which are longer chains. So three or more. There are two types. Amylose, which is 1,4 glycosidic bonds only. And because of that, it forms a kind of curl and ends up forming a helix. There's also amylopectin, also just alpha glucose. But these have, for every one 1,4 one glycosidic bond, it has four 1,6 glycosidic bonds, making it a lot more branched. I mean, the picture doesn't quite showed up it would be it's very branched which makes amylopectin more compact so what do these form we have 
two main storage molecules. Storage is important because we can't just have glucose in the cell. As I said, it will cause water to come in us to die. So we need to store it in an un insoluble way. And the way we do this is making a polysaccharide. They are insoluble. And then it can be broken down through a hydrolysis reaction. Water is added, the bonds break, you get energy, and you yeah, you get the energy. And this will happen in respiration. Respiration is glucose plus oxygen becomes carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Now obviously at A2 we go over what respiration actually does all the different steps of ATP, ADP, NADP, NADP plus all those cool stuff. Um, and once I've actually learnt about them I will be more than happy to uh, do a video on it. But right now I'm, I know very little about it. Um, that's why we need glucose as storage molecules broken down and used in respiration. Each step in respiration is, is catalyzed by an enzyme. I'll be doing a video on enzymes pretty soon. And it's broken down into the simple glucose molecules by these enzymes. Now, animals and plants only have an enzyme that can break alpha glucose bonds, not beta glucose, which is why alpha glucose is used. It was basically because we wouldn't be able to digest it. That's why we can't digest cellulose. But because cellulose, as you'll see later, is beta glucose if you break it down. So, starch. Starch is the storage molecule in plants, plants only. It contains amylose and amylopectin, both of them. It is very compact. It contains chloroplast, well, it's found in the chloroplast, sorry, um, and any other storage areas like tubers and stuff. It's found only in plants, energy storage molecule, and like all energy storage molecules, it is insoluble. Now, if it's not soluble, it will not dissolve in water and will not affect the water potential of the cell, which is what you want. So that's starch. In animals, you have a very similar thing. Glycogen, sometimes referred to as animal starch. Yet again, amylose, amylopectin, found in animals, perhaps little starch granules in the cell, used for energy storage, also insoluble. Differences. It has shorter 1,4 glycosidic bond and is more branched, so it's more compact than in plants. That's the only difference. And the final example, cellulose. There isn't much in carbohydrates, actually. It looks like quite a lot, but really isn't. Cellulose, this is beta-glucose. Now, remember beta-glucose, it has it above the plane. The OH group on carbon-1 is above the plane of the ring. And each beta glucose molecule is rotated by 180 degrees each time so you get a completely straight line it is unbranched see alpha, glu alpha glucose forms a kind of um, little curve which ends up forming a helix beta glucose forms a straight line also in cellulose the the chains the straight chains of beta glucose form hydrogen bonds with each other because you know there are lots of OH groups that form hydrogen bonds, so cross links are formed between the different molecules. But they're, they're, they're only weak, they're not strong. Now, if you have a chain of cellulose, it creates cross links, and lots of these, so, well, lots of these will form a microfibrille. So you have 10,000 beta glucose in a cellulose molecule, and then all of these form microfibrils. And those all bond together with hydrogen bonds and form macrofibrils. This makes it very strong, good support in you know, cell walls because well, it's obviously very useful. It's the most abundant structural polysaccharide in nature, cellulose. And it's very strong. It's almost as strong as iron. That's, I mean, very strong. It is insoluble. Obviously, you don't want water just destroying the cell wall. Also, it's since it's got that support, it's not going to kind of just burst open, which means it gives the cell wall turgidity. So if, let's say, the water potential is very low inside the cell, water floods in, but pushes out, so the cytoplasm pushes out on the cell wall, but it will not burst, unlike animal cells. That's good. Also, it allows for some movement, though. The stomata, they allow gas in and out of plant leaves. And this is because the little openings of the stomata can be controlled by the cell walls. Also, other molecules can be added in with 
the cellulose to create it waterproofing. So you've got in um, cerephytes, desert plants, you have waterproofing to prevent water escaping. Right, and already on to questions. Only been 10 minutes. See, nice short video. Three questions, as I say, these are the hardest you can get. The worst sort of question you need to get is when they ask you to compare the structures of two. Um, looking back at the past questions I have, the only compare one I found was actually between this and a protein, which is actually quite easy, but still. So, name the bond that joins two monosaccharides. Name the molecule formed from the hydrolysis of cellulose. And state three features of the structure of glycogen. I'll give you a minute to pause. Well, not a minute, but a few seconds. Good. A. Name the bond that joins two monosaccharides. Glycosidic bond. Name the molecule formed from the hydrolysis of cellulose. That's when cellulose is broken down into its monomers. Beta glucose. Must put beta. And three features of the structure of glycogen. Any three out of these is made out of alpha glucose. Forms glycosidic bond. It is branched. No crosslinks. Contains carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Contains amylose and amylopectin. Very simple. So, conclusion now. The monomer is monosaccharides. The polymer is polysaccharides. And you have disaccharides, which is just two. These form glycosidic bonds. They can be 1, 4 or 1, 6. And the three examples, starch found in plants, glycogen found in animals, both of them are for storage, and cellulose found as a structural unit in plants. And that's it for this video. Quite a short one. I'm getting three out today, but they won't be too long. So yeah, thanks for listening. As usual, any questions, any comments, any tips, please just leave comments, email me, my email's in the description. And yeah, like, subscribe. We're doing well with likes and subscribes. Well, subscribes anyway, and video views, it's all going great. And keep telling me to your friends and everything. And it's going great, so thanks. Goodbye.